let's translate Genesis 1, 1 through 2. Bereshith bara Elohim eth hashamayim veeth haaretz. Vehaaretz haitha tohu vabohu vechoshek al pene tehom veruach Elohim rachafeth al pene hamayim. So literally, in beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless and void and dark, alpine over the face of the deep and the spirit of God fluttered above the face of the waters. We have in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Notice there's no definite article here. In the beginning, there's no word the. It's just in beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. Now, F here is the definite direct object marker. So we're not going to translate F here. God created the heavens and the earth. So this just helps us see syntactically what we're talking about when God's creating. We don't translate F in this case. Then verse 2 and the earth, that's our subject. This one is, unlike Bereshith here, this one is definite. It's got the definite article. And our, here's our verb. I'll go ahead and put it over here. And, and for similarity's sake, we'll put it like that. Subject was subject. The earth was formless. And void and dark all pene above the deep. So I'm actually going to take all three of these. The earth was formless void dark above the face of the deep now we've got a new clause and the spirit of god fluttered over the face of the waters so let's take a look at the vocabulary here to fully understand what's going on First, we have b. This is our preposition in, at, with. And then we have reshith, which is related to rosh. Let's take a look at reshith here. It comes from rosh, means beginning, as attested in Syriac, Akkadian. And so it's translated what comes first, beginning. Now here we have Genesis 1.1, kind of ironic that it's at the beginning. Bereshith, in, at, the beginning. Notice it has the in the translation, but there is no definite article here. If it were, we wouldn't have Shavah. The REB translates it as when God began to create. 
NEB has in the beginning of creation. And RSV has in the beginning. Halo says it's probably to be preferred as a sort of title or heading. I can tell you this word occurs one other time in Jer Jeremiah, and it is also translated in the beginning as far as NRSV is concerned. WBC commentary says Rashith. Rashith, beginning, is an abstract noun etymologically related to Rosh, head, as well as uh, Roshon, first. It specifies the beginning of a particular period from the beginning of the year at the beginning of the rain. Here it's used absolutely with the period of time left unspecified. Only context shows precisely when, when is meant. By prefixing Rashith beginning with the preposition B in Genesis makes it first two words begin identically. For Bere also spells he created. So you can see over here Beit Resh Aleph. Beit Resh Aleph. This could be coincidence or it could be a literary device. It's uncertain. In the NIV application commentary of the Old Testament, it says, well, it's not so simple. In the beginning of what? It's not the beginning of God. It's therefore not the beginning of everything. The fact that the Hebrew word Bereshith can be translated in the beginning does not mean we can now be content to explore the English word beginning in English terms and categories. Linguistic and cultural information must be derived from linguistic and cultural sources, etc., etc., etc. It can refer to an initial period or duration rather than to a specific point in time. An initial period, not a point in time. The NJPS translates it when God began to create. That's similar to the REB. In brief, those who favor the dependent clause approach need to amend the Masoretic vocalization to achieve their end. They believe this is justified by the fact that there is no definite article on Bereshith and by the grammatical comparison to the Akkadian creation account preserved in Enuma Elish, which begins with the dependent clause, when on high. So against one, research has shown that time designations in adverbial expressions do not require the definite article. Against two, the Akkadian account provides insufficient basis for emendation. The word beginning probably does not refer to the absolute beginning of all things, but to the beginning of the ordered creation, including temporal, meaning time. Time began with God's ordering, and the seven-day time of God's creating establishes a temporal pattern throughout all generations. The author does not deny that God created all things, but God's creative work in this chapter begins with something already there, the origins of which are of no apparent interest. Interesting that origin did not take in the beginning as temporal. So in short, Burashith doesn't literally say in the beginning, but it's pointing to a specific period. Because it's a specific period, it is by definition definite. I know the commentaries didn't say that, but that's what is implied here. And that's why it's legit to translate it in the beginning. But it's totally fine as the REB and the NJPS to translate it when God began creating. Either one is fine. Either one is acceptable. But the point is that God creates. It's not a specific time period but that God creates. And as the word Rosh implies, it's the head of all things. It's at the beginning. God creates. Now, bara is not uh, ex nihilo, creation out of nothing. But it does mean to create. And he creates the heavens and the earth. Elohim can refer to God, or in our case, the true God. Now, the trick to that is Elohim is plural. Normally, it's related to El, Eloha, Elohim, El. So here it's plural. However, the verb is singular. 
So our subject is plural, our verb is singular. Why the mismatch? That's because Elohim in this case refers to the one true God. And as the one true God, which is singular, the verb must match. So Elohim is plural. If the verb were plural, then we would know it's not the one true God we're talking about, but it is. So we have plural here, singular here. So if this is the one true God created at our direct object marker, the heavens. Shemayim. Now Shemayim looks like it's plural, it's dual. So Hebrew has singular, plural, and dual. Dual means two. And there's a few things in Hebrew that are dual, like the heavens, Mayim, waters. So just, just keep in mind, there's three patterns in Hebrew. There's singular, there's plural, and there's dual. And Halot says, Shemayim is apparently a dual, but in reality, a plural. And we're only talking about, not substantive here, but pattern forms. So heaven, sky, the apparent roof of the sky, atmosphere, gives a whole bunch of examples. And here's Genesis 1.1, heaven and earth, and Vav conjunction here, direct object marker, Haaretz. So Haaretz is Eretz, ground, earth, piece of ground, territory, country, the whole of the land. It can even be the underworld. So it's a flexible term, but we know in combination with Shemayim, it's heaven and earth. And the earth, Haya. The verb is Haya. I remember that from, I want to be a martial artist. Haya, come to pass, occur, happen, be, become. There we go. Become, be. And the earth was tohu. Tohu. Most often without the article, the verb is to be rigid. In Middle Hebrew, tohu with the uh, plene spelling numbness or wasteland in the Dead Sea Scrolls refers to nothingness, nothing, wasteland. And so in Hebrew, biblical Hebrew, it's wilderness, wasteland, emptiness, deserted. And we have here our combination tohu, va, bo, hu, tohu, va, bo, hu. So in our case, we have tohu, va, bo, hu. They're synonyms. Signifies the terrible, eerie, deserted wilderness, and this is a primary idea that functions in creation. So, wilderness and bohu, related to the Phoenician noun, uh, nomen uh, divinitive. I don't know what the Latin's supposed to be for divine. Bao, and to the Babylonian mother goddess Bao always parallel with tohu, just like we just saw, partly assimilated to it. It has a rhyming formation, emptiness, wasteness. So wilderness wasteland. And then we have choshek, darkness. Now this is cosmic in scope. So everything's dark. That sets the stage for the next verse, when God creates light, but we're not translating that one. Then we have all pene. All means on, over, in front of, before, above, but that's comparative, so more than. On the side of, supported by, on account of, with regard to, concerning, according to, against, opposite, towards, in addition to, together with, from far off, Downwards from, away, over, because. So which is it? Let's take a look at Panay. 
Panay means before face. I have a feeling it combines with all as a single phrase. So it's pointing towards the surface of the ocean to home, to home. Let's make sure it's not listed a second time. It is not. So it's gonna be over the surface. Given the context, wouldn't be on the surface, over. Yeah, so there's no halo information here about it. Uh, why don't we check BDB? Okay, so it took us to the verb, pana. We're not working with the verb. Here's the noun, face, faces. Panim el panim, face to face. Face is equal to the surface of the ground. Ha'adama, ha'aretz, with prepositions. El, et, lifne, lifne, in other phrases. That's still lifne. Milifne, mifne, here we go. So it has different meanings according to the different senses of the noun and the preposition. From the sense of face or front, in front of, it's more definite and distinct than lifne. But our example is not listed here. Ah, oh, here it is. From the sense of surface, Genesis 1, 2. Upon the face of the deep. So over the face of the deep. Upon the face of the deep. To home, not to be derived from a verb, probably a primary noun, perhaps going back to general Semitic, blah, 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 meaning sea. To Hamat, right? This would be the story of Tiamat. Well, I guess it wouldn't be Tiamat because it's not Akkadian. So ocean, primeval ocean, primeval flood as one of the prominent elements in creation. So the earth was a wild wasteland and dark before or over the face of the ocean. And ruach, this is the verb, we want the noun. This is not it, this is it, ruach. So breeze, breath, and the breath of God, air, breeze, wind, wind, breath, spirit, sense, mind, intellectual frame of mind, natural spirit of humanity, spirit, spirit of Yahweh, spirit of God, and here we go, Genesis 1-2. And the Spirit of God. Now, we don't have the definite article here, but we don't need it because it's a construct. It's construct to Elohim. Elohim is definite. Therefore, Ruach is definite. The Spirit of God, Rachaf. It's like a bird that moves its wings back and forth. So normally, it would mean to tremble in the cal. But in PL, hover and tremble where simply to hover would suffice, moving back and forth constantly. So the spirit hovered over the face of the waters. So the earth was formless and void and dark. Is this dark or darkness? Uh, darkness. And darkness was over the ocean and the spirit of god hovered over the face of the water face or surface that's a tahome we're looking at a mayim i don't think it's gonna make a difference it's still the same all right let's translate it in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and the earth was formless and empty it was a wild wasteland, and darkness was over the face of the primeval ocean, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. If you liked this video, hit the like button, brush up on your Greek and Hebrew, and we'll see you next time.